I've been using test-driven development with Cypress and Jest to build out an Ionic, Angular and Firebase application. One of the first bits of functionality I created for the application was this basic login process. So you're on the homepage, you click the login button to log in with Firebase. You choose the Google account that you want to authenticate with, and then you get taken to the logged in view. So this is all simple enough, and obviously this is a very bare bones application at the moment, but writing appropriate tests for this process is surprisingly difficult. And because I'm using test driven development, I actually need to write that test before I implement the functionality. So you might've noticed that I am using Google for authentication with Firebase, and this presents a bit of a problem for Cypress. So if I were to just use standard email and password authentication, technically I could just set up Cypress to manually enter in a demo email and password to log in. So this isn't the best approach because we don't really want to have to go through the entire auth login flow for every test, but it would work. But since I'm using that sign in with pop-up authentication method with Google as a provider, Cypress doesn't have control over this process and we can't just log in with a Google account. So a good approach to authentication in E2E tests is just to write some kind of custom command to bypass the authentication process. And that's exactly what we can do in this instance. So you can see here what I'm actually doing in the test is I'm calling this sci.login command, which is a custom command, and that's going to bypass the need to go through that authentication process in the app, because this is just going to take care of whatever is required to get the user in an authenticated state. Now, exactly how you set up this custom login command is going to depend on what you are using, what you're authenticating with, how you want to authenticate, and getting this authentication set up with Firebase can be a bit tricky, but thankfully the Cypress Firebase library makes this a lot easier. So I'm gonna walk you through that whole process now. So this is the end result. All we need to do is make a simple call to sci.login in order to bypass the authentication. But let's see what happens uh, at the beginning when we don't have that in place. So I'm going to get rid of that sci.login call and we're going to run this E2E test. Okay, so I have Cypress up and running now. I'm just going to run this home.spec.ts file and we will just take a look at what happens. So the test is loading up. It's starting to run now. It's visiting the home page, trying to click on that login button. And you can see when it does click on that login button, we get the sign in with Google window actually popping up. Now, nothing is going to happen at this point. Cypress is going to wait the four seconds it waits for its uh, expectations to pass or fail. And it is going to fail because we're still on the home page. So what we need is that login command to bypass the need to authenticate in this instance. So let's take a look at actually getting that set up. To install Cypress Firebase, you're going to need to run npm install save dev. Cypress Firebase, and we also need to install Firebase Admin. So Cypress Firebase is going to need to interact with uh, admin functionality for your Firebase project so that it can actually bypass that authentication process. And we can also do things like add documents to the Firestore database and things like that. So I've already get, got this set up, so I'm not going to run that again, but there is also some additional configuration required. Because Cypress Firebase does need that admin functionality, we're going to need to give it access to do that. So what you'll need to do is go into your Firebase project through the Firebase console. You're going to need to click on this little settings button to go to project settings. And then you're going to want to go to service accounts. And from here, you're going to be able to generate a new private key. So when you generate this private key, you're going to save that as service account.json at the root of your project. So you can see that I have this file in my project already. It's just here, service account.json. And this file contains extremely sensitive information and it's important that it is kept secret. So you should immediately add this to your git ignore file. You can see here, I've just listed that in my git ignore. And it's important that you never push this up to your remote repository or commit it to your local repo. And in general, just make sure this file doesn't fall into the wrong hands, because if it does, anybody who has that information is going to be able to access your project. 
So the next step in this process is to create the custom Cypress commands that Cypress Firebase enables. So to do that, we're going to go to Cypress support commands.ts and you'll need to set up this snippet in your file. And this is all in the documentation for Cypress Firebase as well. So if you're struggling to follow along or you want to copy and paste some code snippets, make sure to check out that as well. I'll link that in the description. But this is the basic setup for getting the command enabled. One important thing to note here is that I'm using the new version of the Firebase SDK, the modular version. And at least at the time that I implemented this, uh, the Cypress Firebase library didn't support that yet. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually importing from the compat path. So this will enable me to use the old API and just supply that to Cypress Firebase. So you only need to do this if you are if you are using the new version of the Firebase SDK. If you're using the old version, then you already have the old API and you can just use that directly. And after setting this up, we also need to make sure that we import commands in the index.ts file in the support folder. And the final thing we need to do is go to the plugins folder, go to index.js and make sure you have the snippet that is on screen now in this file. So at this point we should have Cypress Firebase configured and we should be able to successfully interact with our Firestore database in our tests. For example, we could use something like this command. The sci.callFirestore command will allow us to make a call to uh, the Firestore database to add some test data, which is uh, super handy in some instances, but that's not what we're specifically interested in here. What we want to do is handle the authentication. And for that, there is just a little bit more configuration to do. So what you'll need to do is again, come back to your Firebase project and we're going to go to the authentication screen. And then you just need to copy the UID of the user that you want to have authenticate in your tests. So you can just choose whichever user you want to authenticate, uh, copy that UID, and then you're going to add that to a cypress.env.json file in your project. So you can see I have that set up here and you just set up a, a test UID property here with the value of whatever the UID was save that and we're also going to make sure to add that to our git ignore file again you can see i have that listed here along with this service account.json file so with all of that set up we should now be able to call the sci.login command so that's going to use the custom commands that we set up and it's going to log in with that specific uid that we supplied so if i save this and we're just going to launch our Cypress tests again. We'll clear out the old one, click run one integration spec, and we'll see what happens this time. So we can see it's loading now, and you can see here it actually says creating custom token for login. So we can see that there's some stuff going on there. And then it goes through our normal test, clicks the login button, and this time it actually does get to that logged in view and the test passes. And one final thing to point out here is that I also have an after each block set up that is going to log the user out after each test. Uh, if you don't do that, the user is still going to be logged in, even if you don't explicitly call sci.login at the beginning of the test. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And if you think Cypress Firebase is as amazing as I do, go follow the author Scott on Twitter and GitHub. I'll link to that in the description as well. Okay, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.